الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ومغفرته Brothers and sisters, how are you guys doing today? You already know what time it is. It's Nasiha Sessions time, it's Da'wah time, it's click the subscribe button time. So click it if you haven't already done so. <clears throat> so today's video, I know you guys are going to like it inshallah ta'ala. Um, it's around the topic of heartbreak. So I got an email from a sister who said that, you know, she's been in a relationship with her boyfriend for six years. Six years, a long time. Um, when finally push came to shove and it came time for the two of them to get married and for him, the, the man, the boyfriend, to go speak to the parents, he backed out and he started making all sorts of excuses and he basically rejected her and broke up with her. So she's in extreme pain right now. <clears throat> she's devastated. <clears throat> And she's emailed me with some advice on how to get over this. So sister and the rest of the sisters who are going through this and the brothers who are going through this, pay very close attention. Primarily the first thing that you and I need to do is we need to understand how heartbreak occurs. Heartbreak, brothers and sisters, it occurs in the following way. You see, love. We love people, we love our things, we love our business, we love some of us, you know, the dunya, the money, and we also love Allah, right? And we love the Prophet you know, we know that loving Allah is a part of our religion, and you know, loving the Prophet is part of our religion, and you know, we, we've got to love our parents, and we've got to love, you know, love is something that we love, yeah? Now, love is an action of the heart. So when you love someone, your love for them is right here in your heart. Now your happiness is connected to your love for this person. So that means your happiness is also where? It's, it's in you, right? So what I'm trying to say is that that person that you love so much, their love, rather a part of them almost, not literally, not physically, but by means of your love for them, it lives inside of you, inside of your heart. Now when that person leaves you, that love which is inside of your heart also leaves. But it doesn't leave willingly. It leaves unwillingly. It's ripped out of inside of you. And that's why you feel pain. Because that love that you had for this person, that settled in your heart in such a nice, smooth, beautiful way, it's been ripped out of you. It's ripped out of you now that it's torn your heart into pieces in that process of leaving, your heart was trying to hold it in because your heart didn't want to let go of this person. Your heart was trying to hold it in. But in the process, when that person left, they tugged that which love you had for them in your heart out and it came out. Like for example, when your boyfriend cheats on you, your girlfriend cheats on you. That's that, that's, that's that love being tugged and pulled right out. Them cheating on you, them disrespecting you and dumping you. They just pull it and rip it right out. And that's why your heart is feeling pain right now. So now I remember when I was going through a period of heartbreak in my life, the brother who gave me that was set me down and said something amazing to me. He said, Imran, why do you place your love and your happiness in these things that are temporary? If you place your love and your happiness in something like a Ferrari, like imagine some people, they don't love women. They don't love, no they love cars. Like they would rather lose their wife than they would lose their car. And I know I actually know a brother like that in my life. I know a brother like that, yeah? Who like, when he started practicing, like he could lower his gaze from women, but he couldn't lower his gaze from cars. And he ended up giving bare evil eye to people's cars and probably they end up crashing and exploding and all sorts of craziness. Not exploding, alhamdulillah, I didn't mean it like that. But you know what I mean, like problems occurred. The point I'm trying to make is that some people, they put all their love and their happiness in their cars. Some people do it in the money. And some people do it in women or boyfriends or girlfriends or whatever have you. So the brother said to me for an example, he said, Imran, if you put all your love in this Ferrari, don't you know that this car one day is going to go? And because your happiness is connected to this car, don't you know that your happiness is also going to go? That means, Imran, your happiness and your love is always temporary. He said, if you place your love and your happiness in a woman, don't you know that Imran, one day that woman's going to go? If you love her face, you love her figure, you love her because of what you are attracted to, don't you know that beauty one way will fade away? So if your love is based on that beauty, don't you know that that beauty, when it goes, your love will also go and your happiness will also go? 
He said, but there's a way you can ensure that love in your life remains forever. And man, there's a way that you can make sure that happiness remains in your life forever. And isn't that all we want to be in our life? We just want to be happy, right? So you can imagine at this moment, I've got tears in my eyes. I'm listening attentively. I'm like, bro, you need to tell me what that way is. Because this feeling of heartbreak, I never want to feel it again. How do I, do I ensure that I'll be happy forever? He said, Imran, place your love and your happiness in the one that will always remain. Allah. Brothers and sisters, light or darkness, sadness or sorrow, Allah isn't going anywhere. Allah is always there. The whole world can turn their back on you, but Allah will always be there. If you place your love and your happiness in other than Allah, brothers and sisters, your love and your happiness is temporary. But if you place your love and your happiness in Allah, then your love and your happiness is permanent. So brothers and sisters, I want, I explained that to you so you understand from the get-go that you see there are people like you want a long-term solution onto how to get over this heartbreak. A short-term solution is I could tell you some nice cool stuff and then you'll forget about this guy. But sister, you're gonna fall in love with another guy, aren't you? And no doubt, no doubt he's gonna break your heart too. Because we, we human beings are like that, we're not perfect, you know? We slip up, we make mistakes. So if you really want to get over this heartbreak right now and you want to protect yourself from any heartbreak in the future then brothers and sisters what you need to take from me right now and you need to write this in gold is that you need to fall in love with Allah. You must fall in love with Allah. Because if you don't fall in love with Allah your happiness is never going to be permanent. So that's the first thing brothers and sisters. You need to fall in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He will heal the pain that you're going through. That love, that connection, that bond you have with Him will heal all pain. Number one. Number two, it will protect any other pain from ever occurring again. But there's also another reason, brothers and sisters, why you need to fall in love with Allah. There's also another reason. Before I go into this issue of heartbreak and everything, like let me just mention this because wallahi it's important. And that is the issue of shirk. Brothers and sisters, we were created to worship Allah. وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون. الله سبحانه وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون. الله سبحانه وتعالى said I did not create you except that you worship me alone. That was the only reason I created you. Now brothers and sisters, do you know what the two pillars of worship are? A pillar is something. Upon which something is held. Like for example, you see this right here? Like this, this thing right here is being held up by these legs. These legs are the pillars of this thing at the top. Yeah? If I knock the legs, if I knock the pillars, if I knock them over, what's going to happen? The thing's going to fall. Do you see? So a pillar holds up that which is on top of it. So Allah said He created us to worship Him. This at the top is worship. Worship has two pillars. If the pillars of your worship are missing, then you're not worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're worshipping other than Him. Now pay attention. Do you know what the two pillars? Do you know what the two pillars of worshipping Allah are? Complete love and complete humiliation. Those are the two pillars. I want you to imagine how deep that is, because you know people make Islam seem to be like so like like, you know, it's so dead and raw and it's just like, you know, Allah wants us to worship Him. Allah wants us to love Him. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I did not create man and jinn except that they worship me alone. You can also take from the ayah, Allah did not create man and jinn except that they love Allah completely alone. That they don't love anyone the way that they love Allah. And they don't humiliate themselves before anyone the way they humiliate themselves before Allah. And by the way, it is humiliation. You know when you love someone, you humiliate yourself before them, don't you? Like you take their crap. Like if you know someone disrespects you, 
but you're still going to go back to him, you're still going to go running back to him because you love them. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't give us anything bad, anything, because he's our king and our lord. And he's so high, we have to humiliate ourselves before him. That's why we place the most noble part of our face and we place it as low as we can five times a day. That's humiliation. But with humiliation, with complete humiliation, we also completely love him at the same time because of everything he's done for us and everything that he's going to do for us and all the evil that he's harmed us and protected us from. The point that I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, that the purpose and the reason that you were created in this world was to worship Allah, i.e. love Allah, in the way that you don't love anyone else. Complete love, you make it only for Allah. And those who love Allah completely are the ones who have the love for Allah in their heart. Because you see, like I said to you at the beginning, you love your parents, you love your work, you love your job, and you love Allah. Well, the one that you love the most is the one who's in your heart. Their love is in your heart. There's only room in your heart for the love of one. If you place that love in your heart for other than Allah, then you have given that person complete love. And you can fall into shirk. You can fall into the one sin for which you will not be forgiven if you die upon it. To associate a partner in worship with Allah. Because loving is worship. And complete love can only be for Allah. And you may say, but I do completely love Allah. But my question would be that if your boyfriend called you at 6, 5 p.m., 5 a.m. in the morning and you're fast asleep, straight away, what, what, what's he saying? What's he saying? What's he saying? You're going to be eager, right? That love, it manifests in your actions. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the adhan comes, the call to prayer at 5 a.m. in the morning, 4.30 a.m. in the morning. We hear the adhan, our alarm goes and we put it on snooze and we go back to sleep. Or we struggle to get out of our beds. That shows that we don't completely love Allah. But if like someone was to knock at the door and say, hey, you got a million pound, you run because that money, you love it more than Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said from the people, there are those, they, they make equal besides Allah, other than Allah, and they love them the way they should love Allah. يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ They love these people, they have made people equal to Allah, they, by them loving them the way that they should have loved Allah. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ They love Allah severely. Who? The people of Iman, the believers. They love Allah severely. They don't place anyone before Allah. It's Salah time? Sorry, sorry, the whole world comes to an end. I'm going to pray. It's, Ram it's the last third of the night. It's the last third of the night. Everyone else is asleep. Every lover is in bed with the one that they love. But the one who loves Allah, the believers, they get up off their sheets, they make wudu in the cold, and they stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Salah because they are with the one that they love. Their love for Allah is severe. So brothers and sisters, that's the second thing that I wanted to bring to your attention. The first thing was that loving Allah, it takes away this pain and it prevents you from ever feeling this pain again. But the second thing is falling in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it actually is the very reason you're created. <laughs> it saves you from pain in the next life. It saves you from the hellfire. If you love Allah, you didn't do shirk. If you didn't love Allah the way you should be loved, then you fell into shirk. You fell into the greatest sin. So the first point was to protect yourself from heartbreak and pain in this life. The second point is to protect yourself in pain in the next life. The third thing that I want to bring to your attention, my dear sister and everyone else who is experiencing heartbreak right now, 
It is an ayah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَاتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ آلِهَةً لِيَكُونُوا لَهُمْ عِزَّا كَلَّا سَيَكْفُرُونَ بِعِبَادَتِهِمْ وَيَكُونُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ ضِدَّا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that they took these people as partners besides Allah for Izzah, for honor. Is that not why the girl, she wants the brother who's got the most money, or the guy who's got the nice car, it's honor, right? So everyone else can see, yo, this is my man. Ain't that the reason why the guy, he walks around with a pengish chick? Because it's honor. Oh, look at my girlfriend. She's the girl that everyone wanted, and I got her. You took these people, and you loved them, and you honored them, and you made them equal to Allah, or you took them besides Allah, for Izzah, for honor. Allah said on the day of judgment, you know what these people did? You know these people who you're devoted to them from the beginning of your life to the end of your life you, you're devoted to your boyfriend, you're devoted to your husband, you're devoted to your husband, your girlfriend, your wife, you're devoted to them to the very end. Or maybe because the ayah is talking about shirk idols and whatnot but I'm using it for because we also know love can make you fall into shirk. So I just want to drive this point home. You lived your whole life devoted to them, dedicated to them. You know what they're going to do to you on the Day of Judgment? They're going to disbelieve in you. سَيَكْفُرُونَ بِعِبَادَتِهِمْ لِيَكُونُ عَلَيْهِمْ They are going to become your enemy on the Day of Judgment. You, they're going to say to Allah, I disbelieve in this person's worship of me. I, I disbelieve in their love. These people are going to be like, I loved you so much. I loved you so much in this world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to look at these people like, you gave this person love which was for me. So you disbelieved in me. And that person who you left Allah behind for and you fell in love with him, you served them all the way to the end. On that day of judgment, that person, your boyfriend is going to look at you, your husband is going to look at you and say, Allah, I'm free from her. Allah, I, dis I disbelieve in her love. I reject her love. And then say, alayhim didda, the both of you become enemies. Become enemies. The reason I'm bringing this to your attention is that this is a glad tiding. You see, those who love each other the way that they should only love Allah, they're definitely going to break up. They're definitely going to break up. They're either going to break up in this life or they're going to break up in the next. If you break up in the next life, it's too late because you're already going to hell. Because you did shirk. You fell into shirk. You're going to be punished now. Because you didn't worship Allah the way He was supposed to be worshipped. Your reason to be created was to worship Him, to love Him. But you gave love for Him to someone else. So it's too late now. On the Day of Judgment, it's too late. It's too late. Because your boyfriend was your God. Your girlfriend was your God. Your husband was your God. Your wife was your God. It's too late now. So, but, you, but you've broken up. And you become enemies to each other. Or you're going to break up in this life. You're going to break up in this life when you can realize that, you know, I gave this person too much of my love. I gave them too much of me and they didn't deserve it. And you can give, you can now give that love to the one who does deserve it. The one who's been taking care of you this whole time. You were a thing that wasn't even worth mentioning. You were produced from your parents, you know, organs by which they excrete from, not excrete, but you know, the filth comes from those organs. And that's our origins, that's how lowly we are. Yet Allah still molded you and fashioned you and brought you out of your mother's womb. He gave you oxygen, food and parents to take care of you. He gave you beauty, He gave you strength, He gave you knowledge. He gave you all this so you can recognize Him and build a relationship with Him. He's the one who deserves your love. So what I'm trying to make you understand is that it's a blessing that you are, that he broke your heart. It's a blessing that he broke your heart today, because if he didn't, he was going to break your heart on the day of judgment. He was going to break your heart on the day of judgment, if your love for him became shirk. Is it not better that he broke your heart today, so Allah can mend your heart, as opposed to them breaking your heart on the day of judgment? And that's not going to do nothing. It's too late then. So that's my point, my beloved sisters, my beloved brothers. 
take this heartbreak as an opportunity, as a gift from Allah. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through His mercy, through His rahmah, He's reaching out to you. He's trying to let you know, hey, hey, I, like you're, you're not loving me, you're not having a relationship with me the way that you're supposed to. You've given too much to a human being. So to help you, what Allah does is He takes that human being away from your life. He takes them away so your heart can be purified and filled up with the love of Allah. Is that not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did to Ibrahim alayhi salam? Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was so old, he never had a son. Finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him a son in Ismail alayhi salam. When his son grows up a bit older, what does Allah say? Allah says, sacrifice your son, take a knife and cut him, kill him, sacrifice him to me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't want him to just kill his son for no reason. There was a wisdom behind that. It was a test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was trying to teach Ibrahim, Ya Ibrahim, you, who are you going to pick? Me or your son? In the end, Allah saved the son, right? Allah saved the son. He didn't want the son to be harmed. But the point was, Ibrahim, if I tell you to take your son, are you going to pick me over your son as well? Because that's how much love and obedience you have to have to me. That even if I tell you to take your son out, you're going to be ready. Yes, Allah. Not only Ibrahim, what did the son say? The son looked at the father and he said, My father, you find me to be patient. Obey Allah. Through that process, Ibrahim السلام, was showing Allah, Allah, my heart is pure for you and you alone. In the end, Allah gave back to Ibrahim السلام, that which Allah took from him, which was his son. The same way Allah will give back to you that which he took away from you. Maybe the same guy will not come back. And most likely the same guy will not come back because he doesn't deserve you. Or the same girl won't come back because she don't deserve you. But Allah will give you someone, a partner that can love you and take care of you the way that they should. But this time when this person comes, you will be smart enough to not place the love of them in your heart. You will not place love for them in your heart. You will not love them more than Allah. You will place love for them in your hand. In your hand. That way, if for any reason that love is snatched away one day, it won't hurt as much. It won't hurt as much. Because your heart won't break. Because it's not in your heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always be there. So to summarize, my beloved brothers and sisters, heartbreak happens because you loved other than Allah. The people will always break your heart because they're temporary, but Allah is permanent and He will always remain. Number two, heartbreak was always going to happen. If you love someone more than Allah, it was always going to happen. It's better that it happened in this life than the next life because in the next life it's too late. The third point is that when that heartbreak happens in this life, that's an opportunity for you to now love Allah. The question now arises, how do you love Him? Wallahi, the answer is very simple. Can you love someone that you don't know? It's hard, right? So get to know Allah. Get to know Him. That's why you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah to Muhammad? Allah said, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Allah said, have knowledge! of La ilaha illallah that there is no one worthy to be worshipped in truth except Allah there is no one worthy to be loved completely and for us to humiliate ourselves before them except Allah before that Allah said La ilaha illallah Allah said Fa'lam have knowledge learn know who Allah is for that reason and it's very difficult, you know, for me to explain to you more and more about Allah as I would love to, as there's no topic that's more beloved to us than speaking about Allah. But I would like to invite you at this stage 
to join uh, us on uh, the Muslim Survival Guide, which is an online program that we made for this very reason. It was to teach the brothers and sisters the very basics of their religion. You know what the very first thing is that we talk about, that we study on that program? La ilaha illallah. It's all about knowing Allah, who is He, worshipping Him, getting a relationship with Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that topic and that subject is so deep that since we started in October, or rather it was November, till now we're in March, we haven't even finished La ilaha illallah. When the third unit, we haven't even finished it, we're still in it. And the part about love and everything, we're just about to go into it. So if you really want to have that relationship with Allah, whether you're heartbroken, whether you're not, but you want to, this is the reason we're created, to worship Him, to love Him. You have to get to know Him. For that reason, I would humbly request and I would ask you to please make your way to the Muslim Survival Guide. If you go to the link below, muslimsurvivalguide.com, inshallah ta'ala you can register and you can join us. And inshallah ta'ala, Hopefully you get start getting to know Allah and falling in love with Him in the way that He's supposed to be loved. MuslimSurvivalGuide.com In the meantime, like the video, share the video, and please privately send this video to as many people that can benefit. If you manage to watch the video all the way to the end, please help this video get out there to those. Imagine how many people need to hear this stuff. Please share it and really pass it around so brothers and sisters can also benefit from it. I would really appreciate that. Anyways, like, subscribe, share. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Peace.